A recent comment said, more about the focal point, please. Well, you're in luck, Joni, because that's what this episode is about. I received this painting from one of my students in my online course, which can be found at paintwithtricia.com. And she said, I'm getting a lot of positive response to this painting, but I can't help but wonder if it would be better with a focal point. Well, there's one way to find out. That's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna look at the reference photo to see what would suggest itself as the focal point. I am drawn to the uh, strip of light in the back on the right-hand side. At first I thought it was a road or path, and uh, I looked a little closer and I see that it is a log that's fallen down, but it doesn't matter. To make it the focal point, it has to be dominant. It has to be the diva of this painting. And that means that none of the chorus girls are allowed to be prettier. That means in painting terms that we're gonna put the lightest light at the focal point. And then all these other lights that are, are sparkling around, we're gonna take them down a notch so that they are less than the focal point. Choosing the focal point starts a cascade of decisions. For example, I'm going to look around the reference photo for, for lines and shapes that direct the viewer's eye through the painting and to the focal point. For example, there's a log that is uh, closest to us that's fallen across slightly at a diagonal. It comes to another log, which points right to the focal point. So that log that, that points to the focal point is something important to us. And we're gonna make sure that that is, uh, it plays a role in this painting. I also see some beautiful uh, pieces of light on the two logs below the focal point. And I think they make like uh, stair steps to the focal point. So I'm gonna definitely keep those in. I noticed she's used, she's chosen the color of the light and the color of the shadow. She has, um, if, you, if you look at one of like the, the tree on the right, you can see that the shadow is purple. Well, we'll call it violet here. And that means that the light is the complement, which is lemon yellow. That's, that's something I'm gonna keep in mind when I uh, paint this painting, paint this painting. First thing I'll do is I'll put in the, the focal point log back there. Then I'm gonna put in those two stair steps of light. I'm going to lower the other lights in the painting so they don't compete. I'm gonna throw in some more of that purple shadow as I'm going through this shadowy area. I notice that there are four um, little ferns on the left and they are the same size and they're evenly spaced. So whenever you get a little pattern going like that, you, tr you try to break it up because if it's, if it's repetitive, it then is predictable. And when people can predict what your painting is gonna be like, they find that boring. So just to make it a little more interesting, I'm gonna take out one of those and um, in the foreground, there's some beautiful dappled light. I am going to reorganize it so that it makes a, a little shape that leads you up into the painting toward the focal point. And you can kind of see it's already doing that in the reference photo. I will change the, those understory leaves so that they have a darker underside that will help get, make them uh, have form. And I'm gonna poke some holes in it to, to integrate into the painting and to feel like there's light and air in, the, in that space. I put a little more yellow in the far background light near the focal point. I'm gonna show you the um, before and after. And I'm gonna leave it up a little longer because I've had some comments on that too.
forget to give me a like. Happy painting.